You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, goddammit! Get the point. Good. And now... Bend over. Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Hey there, hi there, ho there, everybody. And how are you doing on this wacka 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 doodle Wednesday? <clears throat> Excuse me. Is someone getting the best of you? I'm hoping that they are getting the best from you. And you are getting the best from them as well. Yeah, that was the Foo Fighters. I really enjoy the Foo Fighters. Nirvana was kind of okay. There was a couple of songs I could, you know, kind of go with. My kids were listening to that stuff. And the kid that lived across the road from me (laughs) listened to it really loud. But, um... Yeah, I like the Foo Fighters. I really do. Those guys, and some of their songs, man, they're just dang ornery. Those guys are just ornery, but that's okay. I like ornery. (laughs) I kind of resemble it, actually. Oh, well. Y'all are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on RealLibertyMedia.com, channel 10, also on the RLM Spreaker channel. And if you are listening on the Spreaker channel, please be so kind as to come on over to RealLibertyMedia.com. Think of a nickname. Join the chat. Give me some static. I'll give it back. Because quite frankly, with my crappy internet, I can't chat with you over there on Spreaker. I would love to, but I just, I ain't got the oomph for it. You know, or as Scotty would say, I can't do it, Captain. I ain't got no power. I know, sucky-ass Scotty accent. But, be that as it may, it is a wackadoodle Wednesday. And it has been a very, very interesting week so far. But we'll get to that here in just a little bit. Because <laughs> first, I got to say hey to over here, everyone over here on Twitter. Hey, Twitter, how you doing? I'm up to 675 stalkers. Booyah. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I would bet that at least half of them, English is not their first language which I find quite fascinating. And a lot of these people, I go over, you know, when I see I got a new uh, follower over here, I go check out their page. And I scroll down quite a ways. And if I get three or four things that after I click the translate thing, I decide that I, yeah, I like that, I like that, then I decide to follow them back. So I'm following most of them back. I also do the same thing for those that are of the English-speaking persuasion. And there's some of them that I just plain don't follow back because, dude, seriously, the stuff you uh, tweet out or your little bio thing on the side, mm, just can't go there. Because you know what? Uh, Life is entirely too short to um, expose yourself to people that bring you down. You know? It's just too short for that. And you shouldn't have to. There is no reason in the world. Now, moving along over here on Twitter, thank you, Barman, for tweeting me out. I really do appreciate it. And thank you, Gary L. I'm so excited about that new Suspect Sky series that's coming out. That's going to be sweet about hidden history and and climate um, or, um, mm, damn it. Now I can't think of what it was. Oh, well, I guess I'll come on over here to realliberty.org because I know Gary L. posted it over here, too, because that's where I watched the little promo tip for it. Um, also, I watched it on uh, BitChute, which, yeah, we're out on BitChute, too, after, after, but not, I'm, right now, I'm live on, on RLM and Spreaker and several other places, several other, you know where you're listening to me from, but over here on uh, realliberty.org, I see Grimner and Bob Renner and Rob Works are over here hanging out, having a good time, Uh, Cowboy Tech's also been posting some really cool stuff, as well as Loki Luck, and uh, Late Again has been posting some really cool stuff, yeah, Cowboy, I like that glyphosate water tester thing, I'm gonna have to get one of those water filters, here it is, Hidden Catastrophe Science. That's what Suspect uh, Sky is coming up with starting or beginning March the 1st. I can't wait. That's going to be cool. I know, Rascal, you're trying to help me. But, honey, if you play with the microphone, I can't talk. My key cat. 
She's such a sweetheart. Okay, over here on Freedoms Network. I see Cowboy Tech has been, and he posted the glyphosate over here as well, which I shared that a few places myself. I also see Grimmy over here letting everybody know that I am live and in poison. And KD Troxel was here as well as Bob Renner and Tessa Cunningham. Hey, Tessa. And looky there, Loki Luck 3. The uh, real motive behind the FBI plan to investigate Trump and the Russian agent. Uh, because they can. Pretty much. <clears throat> Sums it up. Uh, over here on Fakie Book. Ah, my brother David just shared this. I'm not sure if this is true or not, but if it is, it's like way cool. Booyah. I do remember seeing something about it in a, a headline blurb, though. So, this is uh, 34-year-old Candace Payne. She's not exactly a celebrity, and she's not rich. But she is exactly the kind of person that should be in the news. Because last week in Chicago, where temperatures were colder than Antarctica, Ms. Payne decided to use her own credit card to rent 30 hotel rooms to shelter local homeless people from the freezing cold. Upon hearing upon her, or of her good deed, others pitched in to help, and she was able to secure 72 rooms for five nights, providing refuge for 122 people. In a world of bad news daily... Sometimes it's easy to forget that there's still so much good out there. So, yep, that is so true. And you know what? Every single day, whether you realize it or not, there are hundreds of thousands of selfless acts of kindness committed on this world. Every day. But that doesn't sell, does it? Oh, well, they just opened a door for someone. Oh, well, they just picked up that person's book that they dropped. Oh, well, they just... Those are selfless acts of kindness. And it's awesome. When you do that, you up the vibe. So, go out there and be one of those hundreds of thousands. I challenge you. There's a challenge I'd step up for. I challenge you to do a selfless act of kindness. And don't tell anyone. Because then it's not selfless. <laughs> then you're broadcasting. You know, I did this today. I'm so good. I did that today. B big whoop. I was breathing in and out. And I still am today. Oh, well. I did, I did, I did. Pat me on the back. Only if you need to belch, darling. Only if you need to belch. Okay, so I've been to Twitter, I've been to Facebook, I've been to RealLiberty.org, I've been to Freedoms Network. Oh, over here on Minds. Yeah, Grimmy shared me over there on Minds. Thank you, Grim. I appreciate it immensely. And I got invited to a new oils group over there for the Young Living group, and the guy was putting out some... I asked him what the difference was between them and, and doTERRA, because I'm a doTERRA consultant. And basically he was saying, really not much difference, yada, 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 yada. But I heard that they use chemical distillation where ours are, are therapeutic grade. Well, you know what? Every one of doTERRA's bottles said certified pure therapeutic grade as well. And as far as I know, they do not use chemical distillation. So, <clears throat> if you're going to try and promote your company, don't do it by beating down the other guy. If you've got a better idea, sell that. You don't have to beat down the other guy. Just saying. Okay, so hi there, everybody over here on Minds. I hope you're having an absolutely excellent evening. And now it's time to get to where you need to be if you want to give me static, besides on my lap where my kitty cat has finally decided to settle. Over here in the reallibertymedia.com chat, and right up top I see Barman, who is the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world, and he shares me everywhere. He does, he does, he does. Oh, is someone breathing all of your air? Rob, darn it, just sit on them. Yeah, there's nothing live on BitChute, but... Sorry, I'm just catch, catching up with the chat here. Hmm, <laughs> you guys are so fun. I know there ought to be a law, but every time somebody writes a law, there's all these lovely unintended consequences that usually bite the rest of us in the ass. Did I say that out loud? Yeah, I did. Okay, back to saying, hey, I see... <laughs> Rob, that's that uh, carbon tax they're trying to get going here. Don't be doing that stuff. Air tax. I'll tax your air, dude. Tax. <laughs> Hi.
hi, Grimmy. Grimmy's also here, and he is the RLM God, don't you know? He is the creator. This is Grimmy's home, and he has been so kind as to share it with us. Even when we get out on the front lawn and we start getting a little bit rowdy, Grimmy still stands there up there on the porch, and he says, Yo, if you're going to be doing that kind of stuff on my line, lawn, get off my lawn. I don't need your doggy do all over my lawn, because I don't want to step in it. Hee <laughs> Uh, ooh, a bucket full of static. Sweet! <laughs> As if I need more. That's okay. I can always take more. Let's see, back to saying, hey, I see the lovely Moose Girl is here. Hey, Moosey. Damn, girlfriend. Damn, you got lots of snow up there. I would say better you than me, but that's just, that's just cold. Jeez, woman. It's going to be next December before you get dug out. <laughs> That's not a good thing. I also see the lovely Kate is here. Hey, Kate, down in Florida, who does not have feet and feet and feet of snow. You are blessed, my dear. And looky there, we got DC is here, as well as Asmo. And Chalcedoni is in the chat, as well as the lovely Cycles. Hey, Cycles, how you doing, girlfriend? I'm here, as well as IB Don C. Meister Bra. Hi, dude. How you doing? Also got the lovely Rain in the chat box, as well as RLM Fluke, the Vanna White of the RLM channel. Looky there. Rob Works, who's been firing up that bubbler and a high cap capacitor. Oh, sweet. He's fired up the bubbler and now he wants an air tax because he doesn't want people breathing his air. That only works if you've got one of those filtration systems that will filter out all the noxious crap that they keep spraying in the sky. Can you say, RAID? Yeah, I feel like that sometimes. But I saw him as I was coming back into town, and I started my little mantra again. And you know what? They started breaking up. I tell you, it works. You just got to focus. Focus your energy. Come up with whatever mantra you want to dissipate those dang tic-tac-toe grids in the sky. You can do it. If I can do it, anybody can. Trust me. Trust me. Whoa, wait. I don't know. You might not want to do that. Moving along. Hey, Romes, how are you doing, hun? You were mad last week when you went to work? Oh, yeah. Yeah, when people do that kind of stuff, that's when I break out the oils. I have oils at work, and there's a diffuser there in the lobby, and let me tell you, <laughs> That bad boy's been going. Every time I work, I have that thing running 24-7. So, although I don't work those hours. Uh, back to saying, hey, the whole Vinny. Not just little increments. It's the whole Vinny. Okay. And W4DKV is here. W4D, W4DKV. Oh, W4D. <laughs> Are you lubing the squeaky wheels, hon? Just curious. Phantom is also here, as well as Beetle. Hi, Beetle. How you doing, hon? Um, I also see Cyborg Noodle is here. May you be touched by his noodly goodness. Uh, Dakota is also in the chat, as well as Frumpy and Grummet. Java, 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 Java Doctor 2 is going to be the Bionic Man again soon. I hope I hope it takes away all of your pain, my dear. Uh JJ's, no, 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 JJ's is also here. Hey, you Scottish feller, are you keeping the kilt down? Just checking. Kozu is also in the house, as well as Ninsan Dubois. And I see a double dose of pox going on in here. We got a poxified and a poxophone, as well as pom 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 pom, -pom sauce and sock puppet. Yes, bronchitis is very contagious, hon. Um... A chemtrail buster? No, Beetle, I am not familiar with a chemtrail buster other than um, I know what I do. I know my little mantra that I do, and I just keep repeating it and repeating it the whole time I see them. And, and as I watch, they start breaking up. You can see a long-ass trail before I start my mantra, and then when I start my mantra, they start breaking up. It's pretty cool. You really need to try it. Um, back to saying, hey, I also see Skittle, the former f is here, and we got a tech man in here. Hey, tech man. 
Uh, there's lots of times I need technical support, but <laughs> some people think it's probably mental support, too. And to round out the crew, the one, the only, the uno. See, that's why it's one and only, because it's uno. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis. Are you impressed? I work with Hispanic people. Okay, over here in the red pill, just in case there's someone listening over here. I see Apostle is over here, as well as F. Canella and K.D. Troxel and Soily that are not logged into the Real Liberty chat room. So, sweet! That's everybody over here. Um, dun, dun, dun! Now, what I'm going to get to is I thought maybe we need a little civics lesson. You know? Just just going by some of the things that I have... I have um, Oh, let's see. Participated in and observed um, throughout, oh, over the last, since the last time I was on the radio, I guess. And um, the remedy for health problems. Sweet. Oh, that is way cool. <clears throat> um, organite. Is that the, organite supposed to be helpful for that as well? Isn't it? Or is that just something that just popped into my head for no real reason? <laughs> you never know. Uh, sweet, I'll have to read that later. Right now, I have something else I wish to get to. So, we're going to play a little, you know, have a little civics lesson. And I'm going to go ahead and share the link for you so you can all read along. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but... Um, the Declaration of Independence. When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them, a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. Now, um, this was basically what was told to uh, the, the King of England. There you go. Oh, Organite disables cell towers. Oh, that... Cool. Okay, thank you guys. Who needs the onion? I have no idea. I like onions. Does that work? Okay, back to this. Now, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, <clears throat> excuse me, and that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Now, I'm going to stop right here, and I'm going to go over a few things with this. Because we hold these truths to be ev self-evident, which means that, duh, you should just know this. It's not that hard to figure out. That all men are created equal. <clears throat> now, in this term, or in this phrasing, that is not the gender-specific men. That is the colloquial or collective men. That is... All individuals are created equal. Now, created equal does not mean equality of results because your results are directly um, aligned with the amount of effort you put into achieving those results. So, just because everyone's created equal in the eyes of the Almighty does not mean that everyone's going to have equal results. That's something that people have a tendency to get hung up on. Now, it also says that they're endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights. And that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Now, I know I have said this before. Number one, this does not stipulate that those are the only unalienable rights. It just says um, that among these, so these are the major ones, the key ones, you have a right to life. Everyone has a right to life. Everyone has a right to liberty. 
and everyone has a right to pursue happiness. They are in that order for a reason because y'all have a right to life up to and until um yeah, I believe that Grim. Grim just posted that and on July fourth, nineteen or seventeen seventy six, King George the Third wrote in his diary, Nothing important happened today. Well, you know, way back then it probably took months for that information to get across the pond. So or at least weeks. At least weeks. So, you know, didn't have this whole Instagram that we do now. Um but as I was saying, everyone has the right to life up till and unless your life is um, taking away someone else's life. I believe that when you decide that you can take someone else's life just willy nilly, like in your pursuit of happiness, you just volunteered to forfeit your life. Now, everyone has the right to liberty, to freedom, up till it starts infringing upon someone else's freedom slash liberty slash life you do you know if your liberty if your freedom is in any way going to infringe someone else's liberty or life apparently you just volunteered to uh not have not be free anymore because that basically that's what it's supposed to mean you have a right to liberty until you start taking it away from someone else now you also have a right to pursue happiness up to the point where your pursuit of happiness starts to infringe upon someone else's liberty or life or someone else's pursuit of happiness now, if your pursuit of happiness is running into a movie theater, standing in the doorway and yelling fire every five minutes, you know, you have every right to pursue that happiness. The only little caveat to that is when you're pursuing your happiness, when you're doing that kind of nonsense, just be a little bit, don't be a little bit surprised if all of a sudden everybody decides, hey, he said it three times now, I suppose we probably ought to leave the building. So everybody gets up and runs you over. Stampede. That's basically the repercussions of your being a nimrod and doing that kind of stuff. Same thing applies for um, the whole freedom of speech thing that keeps going around lately. You know, and I keep seeing on Twitter and on Facebook and... I see it everywhere in social media. And yes, social media can be <clears throat> a real de detriment. Um, but, you know, everybody says, they're infringing on my rights. They're infringing on my... Really? Well, I'll tell you what. <clears throat> if what you are doing by telling someone that they need to accept what your opinion is, you are infringing upon their liberty their right to decide now you have every right to say whatever you want to say <clears throat> you don't have the right to have ever make everybody else listen to you you do not have the right to uh, force everyone else to be silent for you you know that's that whole pursuit of happiness thing it's one of those lovely little caveats that that the right to do something also has the you do not have the right to take that away from someone else so if you're doing something takes away someone else's yeah i know that it's probably not making a whole hell of a lot of sense it sounded a lot better in my head than it does right now but um i was i was reading through my little the Heritage Foundation, my little pocket constitution with with the Declaration of Independence. And, you know, a lot of the things that they got mad about, we're putting up with. Talk about a bunch of, we have been domesticated, if you will. This does go on to say, to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. Now what they don't tell you is if you are silent, you are consenting. That's the way they take it. Not necessarily how it works, but you know sometimes silence is looked at as consent. That's why you need to just open your mouth. 
Um, let's see. Then whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it and to institute new governments, laying its foundations on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Now, prudence indeed will dictate that governments long established should not change for light and transient causes. And accordingly, all experience hath sown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable. Then, and they are more inclined to do that than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. Now, I know there's times when people say, well, why did you put up with it so long? Why did, the, why did you allow this to go on? Because sometimes people have this wonderful little concept called, maybe if I reason with them, we can change things. And it, it won't have to come to this. Maybe, just maybe, but you know, there comes a point when you realize that reason tact, diplomacy, don't work. And those are the times where you have to just finally stand up and say, okay, that's enough. Everybody out of the pool. Or the one that left the duty in the pool. However you wish to look at it. So, now it goes on with a long train of abuses and usurpations. Um, like taxes, a few refusing his assent to laws. Um, it's it's really actually quite long. I'm not going to read it all to you because I shared the link with you, and I think y'all need to read it yourself because I think everybody needs to know this. Um, it closes with. Let's see if I can find a spot where I can just. Okay. Okay. We, therefore, the representatives of the United States of America in general Congress, assembled, appealing to the Supreme Judge of the world for the rectitude of our intentions, do in the name and by authority of the good people of these colonies, solemnly publish and declare that these united colonies are, and of right ought to be, free and independent states, that they are absolved from all allegiance to the British crown, and that all political connection between them and the state of Great Britain is and ought to be totally dissolved, and that as free and independent states, they have full power to levy war, in, uh, conclude peace, contract alliances, establish commerce, and do all other acts and things which independent states may of right do. And for the support of this declaration, with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. And you know, from what I have read, quite a few of them lost their lives, lost their fortunes, and a few of them lost their honor as well. But, you know, a lot of people actually stood up for something. And I know there's an awful lot of, um, oh, well, that's not really what it meant. How do you know? Were you there when they wrote it? I mean, you know, there's a lot of people that say, ah, oh, well, and then, oh, what was it? When Dangleberry was, was in office? Oh, they were a bunch of terrorists. Well, to the English crown, I'm sure they were. It's a matter of perspective. Now, I'm just going to read the preamble to the Constitution because I had to memorize this thing back in school. I don't know how many of you had to do that, but that was a big thing back in school. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, insecure or ensure, excuse me, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, 
do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. Now, there's lots, you know, read your own dang con Constitution. I think you all need to know what's in the Constitution as well. But I note how they say for a more perfect union. And for those out there that seem to think that we can have, and I used to think that, you know, we could do this, but mankind just ain't ready for it yet. Not frequency wise, not mentality wise or mindset wise. We can govern ourselves. <clears throat> Excuse me. It really, it's not all that difficult. And that's basically what anarchy means is self-governance. It doesn't mean no rules. We can govern ourselves, but really, if you're going to try and do something that is a man-made, some kind of society, if you are even attempting to do a more perfect than what you had before, then hey, it's a step up. You know, every day, if what all you do is just step up and try to do a little bit better than the day before, that's what I call progress. And the progressives are the ones that stole that absolutely wonderful word, just like they stole the absolutely wonderful um, word liberal, because I'm an old school liberal. I'm a live and let live kind of person. You know, and if, if you are willing to deal with the rewards and the repercussions of whatever you say or do, then have at it. But if you aren't willing to deal with the repercussions, yes, you want those rewards, but you don't want the repercussions. You think someone else ought to have that? That's when I think, mm, darling, uh, constipation of united criminals. Oh, you know, that could very well be. Um, and no, Grim, they do not teach the Constitution or Declaration of Independence in schools anymore, which is why... When my grandchildren were here, we read this last summer. And uh, I had a bigger book um, that had a little bit, you know, more of an explanation for kids um, that the grandkids actually took home with them. So, you know, don't expect the schools to be teaching your kids what they need to know because schools... I had a conversation with my Uncle Tom about this. Fifty years ago, when he was starting college, one of his professors was just absolutely stunned, absolutely stunned that he actually thought that schools were supposed to teach people how to think, not what to think. And his professor basically told them, people don't know how to think. We're supposed to teach them what to think. Fifty years ago in college. So you know... This has been going on for a while. They don't want you learning how to think. That's where the parents step in. Parents need to teach their children. They need to, That's part of the job. And basically, parents start teaching from the moment that child is born. Now, in the amendments to the Constitution, I see several here that are getting a lot of play action. Like Amendment 1, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech, or of the press, or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for the redress of grievances. Now, um, it, does, it says Congress shall make no law. Everyone has the right to freedom. And this is one of those things that, it, you know, with, with Facebook or any of these other social media sites, someone coming from someone who has been there, done that, not for a very long time, wasn't really a big one, but you really don't have to have a lot of numbers to still get <clears throat> the dregs of society to come lurk around. And um, as someone who has provided a platform to people to socialize, to share, to do all kinds of um, interacting. There are people out there that are going to be obnoxious twats just because they can. Um, troll comes to mind. And I used to be of the mind that um, 
Man, you just plain can't ban people because it's really important to see what they're saying. If for no other reason you are letting them set an example of how you do not wish to behave. You know, there's an awful lot of people out there that set those excellent examples of how you do not wish to behave. I, I know quite a few people like that. The problem is... Um, it all looks good on paper. But when it comes down to reality, you know, look at communism, actually. Look at any kind of ideology. On paper, some of them look a hell of a lot better than others. But when you actually put them into practice, that's when that whole people thing comes into play. And people have free will. And uh, the lovely little thing about that is, you know, people will say, um, wow, you know, I have the free will to do this, and I have the free will to do that. Yeah, you you are free to make those decisions, but that does not mean that you are not that you are not going to feel the repercussions of those decisions or the rewards. Oh, W four D K V is going to get their eyeballs out of here. Okay, well, I hate when that happens. So, um, everybody has the right to uh, practice their religious beliefs. They have the right to speak their mind. They have the right, the press, which hasn't been free for a long time, is supposed to be, you know, doing their thing, which when you really stop and think about it, it's the CIA that's messing with the press. It's not the Congress. So, therefore, they're still... You know, they can say, hey, we're not illegal here. Um, so, yeah, you can establish your religions. You can exercise your free speech. You can go to the government to petition for redress of your grievances. You can do all of this fun stuff, but you have to stop and realize. You can do all of those things up to and until they infringe upon someone's right to life or liberty. Or pursuit of happiness. Now, if your pursuit of happiness tends to be one of those little, eh, I need a safe space. Well, honey, please, you need to grow out of the single digit mentality. Um, let's see. I did say something earlier about, um, what? That's right, Grim. Everyone does have the right to shut the F up as well. And, yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of times people tell me, would you just shut up? Well, if you ask me nicely. Um, if you're not going to ask nice, I don't know. I don't know. That might be a little difficult. But, you know, if you ask nice, I might. And then there's a lot of times where I just shut myself up because I just flat ass don't want to add fuel to the fire or play along or acknowledge or give attention to. And that may be considered chicken shit by some, but I do not have to play with people that do not play well with others. That's a rule that I've made for myself and I'm going to stick with it. So... Um, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> Constitution and Bill of Rights are, you know, really, <coughs> excuse me again, especially considering this is what, President's birthday week or whatever, yesterday was, was Lincoln's birthday and is tomorrow, when is, when is Washington's birthday? I don't know. It's the anniversary of the day they showed up on this planet. They're not here anymore. Yeah, they may have said some really cool things. Yeah, they may have done some really stupid things as well. But don't we all? I don't see why we have to have a special day for presidents. But, you know, federal government, they need another day off because they're so overworked. Especially after that whole month of being shut down. That was hard work, whining, you know. Okay, over here... <coughs> Excuse me. On pigazette.com, 
I'm going to give you the word of the day just because I can. So, inclusive is the word of the day. We must be inclusive. We must be understanding. We must tolerate. Really? Nobody told me I had to tolerate you. But, in any case, yeah, I know, I'm sounding rather angry, aren't I? Inclusive, it's the correct, correct Nick code word, which means white males need not apply. Those already here will be jettisoned. Pretty much, inclusiveness means you will include anything I tell you to include, but you will not include what I don't approve of. That's what inclusivity means nowadays. They always change the definition. Really irritates me. In the quotable quotes section, inclusive always means fewer white males. I've yet to see an exception. That's from old Remus. Hmm. I did not know that, old Remus. Thank you very much. I did see something earlier today about uh, the Girl Scouts had, or girls had pushed um, in order to be able to join the Boy Scouts. And then I found out today that now there is a girls only Boy Scouts. What the? Did they not have Girl Scouts? Can you not do in the Girl Scouts what they do in the Boy Scouts? I had daughters. We did Girl Scouts for a couple years. I, I, don't, I don't get the deal here. What the heck? Y'all are freaking weird. You want to have it your way and then you start... You know, it's like these um, um, all-black colleges or the black congressional congress. What if there was a white congressional congress? The whole world would be in an uproar or at least a good share of Hollywood. Why is it okay for one and not another? I don't get that. In any case, back over here to the pig. Um, this date in history, the 13th of February, 1924. A minor blip on the Egyptian radar when alive, King Tut becomes a superstar millennia or a millennia after his death when some Snoopy Brits disturb his eternal repose. Man, I hate that. And also this date in history, the 13th of February, 1981. Unable to wrap its head around the pesky piece of punctuation, the period, the New York Times publishes a 1,286 word sentence. Was that to trying to get into the Guinness Book of Records or something? The hell? I don't get it. Okay, well, Hambo and Porkus have got all kinds of other way cool stuff going on over here on the pig. So come on over and say hey and tell them Grammy sent you. And by the way, uh, someone, I think it was actually Porkus that told me years ago that today is Nas International Blowjob Day. You know, for those of you that are curious, because tomorrow's Valentine's Day. What are you getting for you, sweetie? That's what Porcus told me. And I said, well, good luck with that. You're in California, hon. I'm sure you can find someone that can tend to that. <laughs> I don't know if it's true or not, fellers. You need to clue me in on that. Oh, Sock Puppet identifies as a doctor. Gynecologist? Is that what you identify as? Cosmic Ambassador? That's way cool, Rob Works. Um, dun, dun, dun. Okay. Do you have offended dysfunction disorder? The cure is here. Really? There is, that's a disorder now? You know why it's a disorder? Because Big Pharma has a pill for that. <laughs> oh, it's a video. And I know that guy. He's goofy. Thanks, Rob. Okay, let's see. Find one more thing to chitty chat about before I run out of here. Did you know the great state of Cans Ass? Cans Ass. <clears throat> we have our own brand of Nimrods out here. We got we got our share, trust me. Florida just gets the um gets most of the 
uh, promotion on this stuff. But yeah, Kansas has got its share. But I got I got a toot our horn on this one. Kansas farmers are starting to apply for hemp production. In Reno County, no less, which is down in the Wichita area. The fields at Always Sunny Hemp and Bee Farm in Reno County are empty for now, but soon industrial hemp will grow here. That's the goal of farmer P.J. Sneed, who tells me that he's been waiting for this day to come. Our acreage here at Sunny Hemp and Bee Farm is going to be planted around the barn, and uh, he's been working to grow hemp for five years now. On Friday, he got one step closer. He's one of the many farmers who started applying for license to participate in the state's industrial hemp research program. Now, Sneed plans to start out growing hemp for CBD oil. He says the application is very detailed and requires a background check, and it's pretty extensive, but for a new crop and commodity that's coming online, I think it needs the regulations there, which, okay, PJ... I don't like the regulations. Anytime you give them a handle on that kind of stuff, but it's it's a step in the right direction. So to help farmers navigate the application process, Kansas for Hemp Organization will host a symposium later this month. It's scary and exciting at the same time. And there's a lot of unknowns still for everybody involved. So farmers have until March 1st to submit their applications. Now, I did talk with my farmer about this and a few other people, and there are all kinds of amazing things that you can do with hemp. You know, And hempcrete is a big up-and-coming thing, and there's a place out in Colorado that, that does that. Um, your CBD oils, all this other fun stuff. And you know what else? George Washington grew hemp. Matter of fact, there was an awful lot of people that grew hemp for a long time. It's a very, very versatile crop. And, from what I understand, it's also very good at pulling toxins out of the soil. And um, I believe it was around Chernobyl they planted hemp to help pull the radiation out of the soil. One of Mother Nature's true miracles. And yet the government has it as a Schedule 1. I don't know if it still is or not. I don't remember if they got that taken care of took it out of the Schedule 1 status or not, but Mother Nature gave us this miracle. And the government decided that since it looks like, we can't have it. And, you know, the other one that's also a plant that's been around forever, well, you can't have that because that one has lots of medicinal properties and and we make way more money if we control the supply and sell it to you through the black market. Yeah. So, um, why we never see aliens? We don't see aliens because, um, they don't want us to see them. That's why. <laughs> They're smarter than us. How do you think they got here? A lot smarter than we are. Okay, let me see. I had one more thing I wanted to get to real quick. If I stuck it in my pocket. Probably I did not. That's that's the bad thing. I have a tendency to think I'm going to stick it in my pocket, and then I forget to stick it in my pocket, and there you go. All gone. Poo. Okay, well, we'll do this one. Just because I still have a few minutes left. If it will wake you up. This is from theawakeningtimes.com. And, you know, people really need to kind of shake the fog off the brain. Learn your history so we don't repeat it. And wake up and see what, what they don't want you to know about. That's what you need to research. Did you know that natives kept long hair for spiritual power? They did. In native cultures, men and women are <coughs> excuse me, recognized by the length and glory of their hair. And the cutting of hair by oppressors has long represented the submission of, and defeat of the people through humiliation. And the way a people comb 
which is the alignment of thought, braid, the oneness of thought, and tie, which is the securing of thought, and color, which is the conviction in thought. The way they do that with their hair is of great significance. Each hairstyle re represents a different frame of mind. So, hair is largely believed by them to be an extension of your thoughts, and hairstyles are especially important for they portray and announce participation in various events. Now your hairstyle indicates your statement of merriment or mourning at a given time. Whether you're marriageable or married, your age and tribal status, it's a representation of your feelings and your life situation. Different styles signify the tribes that you belong to, and hair is not just a fashion accessory for aesthetic advancement, it's literally the pinnacle of their spiritual expression and is a source of their strength, intuition, and power. Yes? Oh, that's awesome, Moosey. We usually think of hair as just being a matter of personal preference, but in reality, it's much more than that. Nature put every hair on your body for a reason. The hair of the legs regulates the glandular system and stabilizes a person's electromagnetic field. The hair under the armpits protects the very sensitive area where the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system come together. This affects the brain and your energy level. Eyebrows protect the eyes from sun and sweat. Facial hair on men covers the moon center on the chin and protects them from excessive moon energy. The hair on the top of the head is very long, and while the hair on the body is short. If you only, or if, if it were only for warmth, the hair on the body would also be long. We only have long hair right over the brain, and we're practically the only creatures designed this way. Some say hair is your antenna to receive a picture of the subtle world around you and to tell people when you're lying or to feel things before they happen. So, the nature or the natural intelligence of the body is to maintain its hair and if you allow the hair on the head to grow undisturbed, it will grow to a certain length required by your body and then it will stop. And I think my hair has reached that certain length by my body to where it has stopped. And I'm okay with that. Perhaps you've noticed among uh, Sikhs who do not cut their hair that hair length is different for each person. And each body has its own requirement. The hair also reflects the health of the individual. And it has been proven scientifically that people who have long hair tend to be less tired, more energetic, and less likely to become depressed. People who have long hair also conserve energy and don't feel the cold of winter the same as people with short hair. Naturally, because you got that, yeah, moving along. Now, a person who has short hair wastes his body energy, and a person who cuts his hair over his lifetime forces the body to grow 22 meters of replacement hair. A person who keeps his hair only produces 1.5 meters of hair over his lifetime. That's kind of cool. So, I wonder what it means by me having silver hair <laughs> with purple and teal in it. I wonder what kind of status that says about me, other than, well, you know, I kept getting told, you're going to be a little old blue-haired lady, and I thought, you know what, if I'm going to be a little old blue-haired lady, I'm going to have fun with it. And I'll do many shades of blue. <laughs> In any case, y'all been listening to Ram Grammy's Rocketeer here on RealLibertyMedia.com, channel 10, on this wacka 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 doodle Wednesday. Be sure to check back because um, I know we've got all kinds of shows going on. Let me see. Let me pull up the schedule real fast. On Thursday, we got Flash with 20% off at... Uh, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. I will be back on Friday for the Freaker Friday edition of the Rocket Chair. Also on Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time is Vinny with the Ponder Gander. All kinds of way cool stuff going on here on RLM. And 
there's almost always a rousing chat going on. Sometimes a little too rousing. And that's usually when I step away and go do something else. But I want to thank you all for listening in to me this evening and for the little civics lesson for putting up with that. I just felt it was kind of sort of necessary. There's so much I needed to put that out into the universe. You know, and to me, it's not just, you know, the United States Constitution. I know it says all men are created equal, which is a not a gender based term. It is a collective term. We are all created equal. Stop demanding equal results because that's not going to happen. And we all have the right to life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. So long as we don't infringe upon someone else's. So thank you all for listening in. I hope you have an absolutely amazing rest of your evening. I will catch up with you later in the funny papers. But until then, please remember, I truly do... Love you all, and I wish you all enough. Good night.